Hello guys. So um, this is an interesting problem from ISI two zero two zero of uh, PSB uh, problem six. Uh, the problem uh, revolves around the idea of uh, multinomial distribution and uh, estimation of the parameters of multinomial distribution, and we'll uh, go into that very quickly soon. Uh, more than that, uh, the way we arrange the problem is as always there is a Step of thoughts, and instead of solving, we name the whole thing of exploration. So, without further ado, let's first uh, go into the problem uh, just quickly. Okay, so this is the problem all about. Uh, suppose the individuals are classified into three categories: C1, C2, C3, and p square one minus p square and two p into one minus p, the respective population proportions. Okay, where p is the probability. Uh, the random sample of n individuals are select is selected from the population. The category of each individual uh, is recorded. The sample is selected, and uh, x i denote the number of individuals in the sample belong to the category c i. That's a normal definition, and we have defined like I the question for us defined u to be a, a really strange statistic. Uh, uh, is x one plus x three by two? The question is that is u sufficient for p or not? Okay. You have to justify like whether you have to justify answer, and you have to also find the means for error of u by n. So the question revolves around the idea of uh, u, right? So that's the basic idea. U, uh, like the sufficiency of u and the variance of u. So let's try to understand. Whenever we are given this problem, like any any problem like this, now we always try to understand like how, why, rather than how, we are trying to understand why is that u given over here? Okay, what is the use of that u? Why is u defined in such an uh, like uh, different manner? Okay, so we will try to understand that. And as you know, as our habit is, as I have always taught my students, is that never stop at a certain point. Okay, just because people have asked you to give and find out whether uh, u is sufficient, you will not only start, stop to find out whether u is sufficient or not. You try to explore whether u is MLE. What is the MLE of p? So the parameter is p, right? What is the MLE of p, and what other stuffs are you over here? What different other ideas are over here? Okay, so we will explore that and do that together, and that's why it needs a little bit of more time than norm usual. Okay, so let's go ahead, and so we are trying to understand and explore u. Okay, what is the parameter? What is the estimate of u? And therefore, we will do much more than what is required in the problem, and that's always our habit, and we have always ends with some food for thought. So let's go into that. So let's define first. We try to understand when you are given the problem like this. Try to understand that what is the distribution of the random variable. Because if you know about that the 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 sample follows some good random variable, then what you can do is that you can actually use the properties of that uh, distribution. Okay, and that's why the first step always about this problem is try to understand whether you know the distribution or not. So we find out that x one comma x two comma x three. For those multinomial capital N, this because N sample is taken out, and uh, P1, P2, and P3. Okay, we can understand like this. And uh, now observe that the marginal distributions x i follows binomial N comma P i. Okay, that makes sense. And therefore, expectation of x1 by N is equal to P square expectation of x2 by N is one minus P. Whole square, the corresponding p1, p2, and p3. That makes a lot of sense, right? So, uh, this may till this point, uh, this makes sense, and you must ask me some doubts if you have any in the comments. Okay, that is really essential since the live session. So, understand this that we are understood about the distribution x1, x2, x3. So the next step is that we are trying to explore and understand the parameter p and what are the estimates of parameter p. And let's see what we ask the question. What question we ask, brothers? So the question is asked that I ask the question to myself that why that weird u is given that x one plus x three by two, okay? Why that weird u is given? And we will try to find out various other understanding of that, like how that estimate comes up so naturally, okay? So that is the what we are aiming for, and uh, if so, I try to understand that whether this it's a linear combination of the x one, x two, and x three. So I try to understand like. Whether the expectation is uh, p or not, whether it's an unbiased estimate or not, and it turned out to be unbiased estimator. So, in fact, it is turned out. It turns out to be the only unbiased estimator among the all unbiased estimator, all the linear combination of estimators of x one, x two, and x three. So linear estimators. So 
we take a, a expectation of a into x1 by n plus b into x2 by n plus c into x3 by n and we take their expectations we get that a into p square so we use this property of marginal distribution over here uh, just give me a moment we use this property of marginal distribution over here uh, in the next one okay in the next one i'm not sure whether you can see it or not yeah yeah, uh, here we use this marginal property over here, and what we get is that we get a polynomial in P, and we equate it to zero, and we get oh I think it will be P over here. Uh, yeah, we get it to P, and we get that a one is equal to one, b is equal to zero, and c is equal to half. This is the only unbath estimator of uh, the linear combinational unbath estimator that we have, uh, which is uh, like unbath estimator of P, and that makes sense. That's why we have asked. That's why we have asked that why x1 plus x2 x3 by 2 like that's why we're interested in the statistic x1 plus x2 by x3 by 2 so once you understand well into this deep matters about the question the question become a part of your okay your mind too so therefore it makes the question much more interesting and it can explore the question more because you're all future data scientists and statisticians in the making so you should ask this question yourself always so we have understood one of the reason why what is x1 plus x3 by 2 why that special Num the special statistics is given. Statistics is given over here. So the next idea is that uh, see, we are trying to understand the whole thing. Okay, we are so we are not forcing anything. We are not going towards any direction. We are trying to understand the problem, and we have understood that uh, that is unbiased. But the next question comes that what is the MLE? Okay, is that number? Is that uh, u is an MLE of p? And therefore, we try to understand the MLE of p. And we try to write the we try to write the log like likelihood of the whole uh, given data. So x1, x2, x3, and p1, p2, p3. We write the log likelihood over here. So these are specific constant over here. You can ignore that. It's proportional to product of p on pi whole to the power xi. That is the idea of the whole thing. Okay. Hello, Tanya. Yeah. So you can ask your doubts over here always. So uh, you must ask your doubts over here uh, if you have any doubts. It's a live session. So we have a likelihood, calculate the likelihood. That's how, my, how the multinomial likelihood is written, okay? So make sure you know this stuff. So in our classes, what we do is that we do only two usual multivariate distribution. One is multinomial which, and one is multivariate normal, okay? So therefore, you must understand this. You must know this before going to the exam hall. From an exam perspective, of course, for your data science and statistics future, you must know this. So we got the likelihood to be proportional to the P1, PI whole to the power XI. Now here the pi are in terms of p, so we write it down because we are trying to find the maximum likelihood of p. Okay, so therefore we need to like find the need to find the uh, log likelihood and likelihood in terms of p. So we write it, wrote it down, and we got that some constant plus log of p square into x one plus log of one minus p square, whatever this is. Okay, so we got this as so it's like a, you can take this as hints. Okay, even if you don't see the proofs all this uh, all through this, you must take this as hints that you need to find the maximum likelihood estimator and do that in your home. It's an exercise, okay? So that's why you can take this as a sort of hints for you. So I'm, uh, or if you want to see the whole proof, you must stop this and you can uh, check this out and check that yourself, okay? Whether this is true or not. There can be some typing errors over here too, but yeah, essentially it's so uh, we got the like log likelihood function, okay? And now we have to differentiate with p, and we after differentiating with p, we get that. Uh, this is the differentiating uh, f dash is uh, l dash is come log of that l is coming out to be and we equate it to zero in terms of p we talk, get that a p hat of ml is equal to x1 by n into by one plus x3 by n by two exactly the same ratio we have got so what we have got over here guys very interesting we have got that the mle is unbiased okay for p and that is a huge result you know why because there's a result as i will go to the next slide uh, an unbiased maximum like estimator of any theta attains the CRL with the Kramer Rao lower bound, and it is the UMVU of theta. Okay, so it is never asked that to find out the UMVU of theta, but we have explored it, and that's the beauty of the question. Okay, always explore problems. Okay, that makes your you really interesting. The whole thing really interesting. Okay, you will enjoy the problem solving in your part. So we have got what we have understood that first of all it's an unbiased estimator x1 plus x3 by 2 x1 plus x3 by 2 and we have got that x1 plus x3 by 2 by n in some uh, in some sense is actually the MLE of p. So we have got the MLE is the unbiased estimator and in that case it turns out to be this result it turns out to be the EMV of the whole thing and therefore it attains the Kramer-Lowe bound. It, it gives there is a result like this okay 
it's a very easy to prove we can easily prove it using because mla and tamara law one both are dependent upon the log likelihood and uh, therefore you can uh, we there is a connection between that you can easily prove it yourself if you just sit with it and do it mathematically so we have got this but it is never asked whether uin is umv or not but it will help us out just when an observe maybe the question could have asked find the crlb also okay it would have been harder but they can they could have also asked you to so let's understand on the sufficiency part so we have understood that uh, the x1 plus x3 by 2 makes really some sense okay u is a really important estimator over here we get to understand that so now uh, let's come back to the question what we need to prove we need to prove that u is a sufficient estimator of p if u is a sufficient estimator of p what do we get if u is a sufficient estimator of p we get that how do you prove that there are various other ways but the most important easiest way is the neyman factorization theorem okay uh, the neyman factorization theorem says that uh, you can write the likelihood into the fu function of parameter and the sufficient statistics into something that is not dependent upon the parameter so let's try to address that uh, let's try to re rewrite the whole likelihood equation in terms of this uh, we use neyman factorization theorem over here and let, like, let's try to write that okay on our own and what we get is that we write the likelihood over here p x1 comma x2 comma x3 and we write p to the power if you just write it down over here if you just replace the p1 p2 p3 over here you understand p1 p to the power p square to the power x1 uh, then 1 minus p whole square to the power x2 and therefore we just writing in that manner you get uh, this is a beautiful form actually we'll use this form later on we get the likelihood of p to the power x2 twice x1 plus x3 into 1 minus p whole to the power twice n minus twice x1 plus x3 into some parameter of some uh, function of the estimate uh, the sample okay and we can understand it from here easily that this is a function of the parameter theta which is the parameter p over here and we have understood that if we write observe that this is actually if you observe this very carefully i will just give you the spoiler now okay let me not let me, let me not give you the spoiler now so uh, we have got that we have seen that this is a function of x twice x1 plus x3 and this is actually twice of x1 plus x3 by 2 which is a sufficient statistic over here which is so twice of x1 plus x3 by 2 so it's actually a function of the sufficient statistic uh, and this g and therefore x1 plus x3 by 2 is a sufficient statistic so that's how we use the idea of uh, name and factorization theorem okay good so next is next idea is i need to find the mini mean square error okay so if you need to find the mean square error so if you don't understand the like proof in between you must write sit down and do the proof okay otherwise it doesn't make sense you you just write down the proof and then it makes sense okay please do write down the proof that's my request to you if you want to understand the problem better i'm just giving you the hints and the ways out here so now understand what you need to find the variance and observe that this x1 plus x3 by 2 by n is actually uh, uh I mean, it should be by n actually over here. Um, is actually the is unbiased, right? And since it's unbiased, it's equal to the variance of x one plus. It should be u by n, okay? Uh, and this is some error over here. Uh, in my writing error, and therefore we got that variance of u is also the CRLB, okay? We know that. So how do we really find to find the CRLB, okay? There can be two ways. You can easily easily find CRLB, or you can really find the distribution of x one plus x two by x three by two, and we can find out the uh like variance from there directly so which way so how do we really do that the now i will give you the spoiler that i was that that's really turning point of this when you don't need to calculate so much the idea is that if you observe the likelihood ratio it's you see it has a really beautiful form like a binomial okay and it's, it's proportional to p into this thing into one minus p into twice n minus this so what we can show over here see if you figure over here this will turn out to be one what you will show what you can show over here guys that a twice x1 plus x3 follows binomial twice n comma p it's really easy you just integrate it and you will get it okay it's really easy and it's really beautiful that's it okay and it gives a lot of intuition about this so therefore what you get over here that twice x1 plus x3 follows binomial twice n comma p and during the exam you just write it down okay it's not really important to because you see it's very really useful like you can see it really easily because it's proportional to and therefore we get that twice x1 plus x3 follows binomial it is a turning point of it and people may have complained that this last year isi paper was really lengthy but it's not it's actually based upon your intuition and how good you are in probability okay as, as always i have told you be good in probability have a strong foundation in probability this will help you a lot so what do you get over here that twice x1 plus x3 follows binomial twice n comma p 
and you just find you to find out uh, like uh, variance of twi- a u by n and you know that since it's twice binomial n comma p you get twice into u is equal to twice n into n minus we well, just use a binomial theorem okay and you use it to find out the proportional of the like you use it that you find out u by n from because you know the binomial like you know twice of u is binomial and therefore you get twice n to n p minus 1 and therefore you can divide it by 2 and you get it, the whole thing that's what you need to prove but that's not where we end i hope there is no doubt over here guys if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comments but more than that we'll ask some other questions so we have understood it so as we have already uh, always do we try to understand we try to have more food for thought okay So what is the food for thought in this case? The food for thought is the following. So the question is that we have found out that U is a UMV, we have found out U is a MLE, we have found out U is unbiased, of course UMV, uh, and we have found out uh, U is sufficient. Now my question is: Is U minimal sufficient and complete statistic for P? That's a thing you can explore. It's a research question too, and it's in fact you can it's easy to see. Okay. Now you understand. You may have observed that x one and x three only u involves only x one and x three. Now can you find a minimal sufficient statistic involving x two? I mean, it's a very easy question. It's just a trick, okay? Uh, I mean, I have given you just to turn it front around, okay? Just that. And these questions can come. Now the generalized question is that can you generalize this problem? So you have understood p i r all polynomials, a quadratic polynomials in p square. With the property that they lie between zero and one, so can you generalize this idea to this p i to be quadratic in p and where you assume them to be lying between zero and one and their sum is one? That makes sense as a generalization, and you can also try out to find out the minimal sufficient and complete statistic and all the U M V U and all this beautiful pro, like uh, property of the estimator of the parameters in the general multivariate case where x one comma x two comma x dot or x n follows n comma p one comma p two dot p n. You can find it out, okay? That will be a really good exercise for you, and I am sure you will like. I mean, you can use the basic definition of sufficient, and you can find it. Out. You can use the MLE also. So that's really easy. I think uh, the so the challenging part is number one and number three. So you can explore these problems, guys, and never stop questioning, uh, and never stop asking, and never just stop just at solving the problem that's given in the exam. Okay, always come back home and explore the problem. That's what makes it interesting. So I hope you really enjoy the session over here. I hope. Do you have any questions? Yeah, you're right, Rithik Banaji. Uh, we divide by four n square. You're right. We are dividing by that. You're right. So we, you can explore these questions. Get back to me in the comments. Uh, we will also write a blog post on this. I will give it in the next description below. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, do subscribe to our channel. Uh, it will help you a lot. And I hope you will enjoy the session. Uh, more sessions like this. So stay tuned and stay blessed. And till then, I see you in the next session. Bye bye.